Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Mislav from the other side of the screen and in this tutorial we are going to talk about the ps command. Okay, so what is the ps command? The ps command is used to display the processes which are currently running. By running the ps command without any options, you get the processes associated with the current terminal. Okay, so if I type in the ps command without any options and press enter, I actually get the processes associated with the current terminal. Now, most likely you will just get bash and ps. And the thing I get here, uh, all of these things are actually the Mendeley desktop uh, program, which I started in the background uh, in the previous tutorial, okay? And basically uh, these, uh, these, all of these things, so all of these things right here, are again actually associated with this shell even though i started a process in the background they are associated with the current terminal okay they are associated with the current terminal okay so now let's explain the columns pid is process id okay so by using pid we uniquely identify each of these processes tty is the controlling terminal associated with the process. This field is completely relevant, okay? So just don't focus on that at all. Time is processor time. Uh, the process is taking up. The more processor time a process takes up, the more demanding it is, okay? So we see that uh, my Mendeley desktop here is taking up actually, uh, if I'm interpreting this correctly, just five seconds while everything else is taking up literally zero. So only Mendeley is actually eating up some of my processor, but again, not, not at all a lot because it's only five seconds. And CMD, which is right here, is the command which, with which we started the process. It's the name of the process with arguments, if arguments exist, okay? And if you remember, we just started Mendeley desktop with the, uh, uh, we just started Mendeley desktop in the background. We didn't supply it any arguments uh, and all of these other things uh, are actually uh, sort of, I would say the supporting software which runs alongside Mendeley. Okay, so when I started Mendeley, I actually started all of these other things, okay, as well. Okay, so if I wanted to see all the processes that our current user is running, so this just gives us the processes associated with this terminal. If I wanted to see all of the processes that our current user is running, I would type in PSX and press enter. And now I can see that there is a lot more processes here, okay, a lot more processes here. So we have basically all of the same columns. We only have one additional column, which is called stat. And let's see what stat means. Stat is short for state. State is the process state. It indicates what the process is doing. The first capital S means that process is sleeping. And that means that the process is waiting for input. There can be other process states and you can look them up on Google if you wish. But anyway, the first capital S means that process is sleeping. More accurately, it means that process is waiting for something to happen. And I basically wrote down here in the preparation for this tutorial that process is waiting for input. But basically, more generally, process is waiting for something to happen. Okay, either it's waiting for input, it could also be waiting, uh, for example, for some event to happen and then to quote unquote wake up. Uh, and then to continue executing, okay? And if we want to see the processes of all users, not only uh, my user, which is Mislav, uh, I can type PSAUX and press enter. And now I see a lot of, uh, a lot of output, okay? And basically let's just scroll right over here. Here we see the column user and so the user is the user who started the process, okay? So we can see that some processes were started by root, which is the super user, and some processes were started by these other people, and some processes were started by Mislav, okay? Mislav is, uh, is my user account. Then we have the PID, process ID. Then we have percentage CPU. This signifies how much CPU in percentages the process is using. 
uh, percentage memory is the percentage of RAM the process is using. VSZ is the virtual memory size. And you can think of virtual memory, I'm not gonna get into virtual memory, memory here, but just think of virtual memory as being as large as your hard drive and RAM size combined. And basically virtual memory is used when, I would say that basically virtual memory is sort of used to expand your RAM. So the idea is, okay, if your RAM is small and if you're running a lot of processes, then what actually happens is some of uh, less frequently used uh, parts of RAM. So basically, as you already know, all of the programs are stored in RAM, okay? And let's say you fill up the entire RAM. The entire RAM gets filled up, okay, with programs. And uh, you want to run additional programs. And if, only, if RAM was your only memory option available, you couldn't do it because RAM is filled up and you can't start new processes. However, if you actually say, okay, I'm going to take the least frequently used process or, you know, some process I'm not using that often, which basically means least frequently used process, I'm going to take that process, I'm going to put it in my hard drive or my permanent storage device, which can also be a solid state drive, and then I'm going to take the program I want to run and put it in RAM. So basically, you're kind of exchanging between the RAM and your permanent storage device. And that is called virtual memory. So virtual memory is both your RAM and your permanent storage device because permanent storage device also contains certain pieces of your program. Okay? Uh, so that's VSE. So that's a little bit more elaborate explanation here. Then we have RSS. RSS is resident set size. This is the amount of RAM the process is using in kilobytes. Okay, in kilobytes, this is basically a measurement unit for memory. Uh, and start is the time when the process has started. Okay, and all of these other commands, uh, we already talked about them. Okay, and basically this is how you can look at the uh, processes running in your computer. Just as a quick review, PS, PSX, uh, PSX gives you uh, processes of the current user. This gives you the process associated with this terminal and PSAUX gives you processes from all users, okay? And I think we covered everything I want to cover in this tutorial. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you'll recommend this awesome tutorial series to other people as well and uh, subscribe and talk soon.